Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, the Soder Blurb, uh, the Back to School edition. Just wanted to share a little bit about this book that I'm reading again, Teaching to Change Lives. And I recommend this highly to any teacher. Uh, this is my second time through it. Howard Hendricks uh, was a pioneer in the Christian school movement. And this book draws on the classic by John Milton Gregory, uh, The Seven Laws of Teaching. Uh, but Hendricks takes the, those seven laws and uh, puts them in a more pastoral uh, 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 packaging, um, mostly to Sunday school teachers, but the principles apply to all teachers. And what jumped out at me today was him talking about how we need to be careful not to label students. And he says this, labels are libel. Labels are libel. So often we label our students as she never talks or he's the troublemaker and so on. Never hang a label like that around someone's neck. And I know I've been guilty of this in my 21 years of teaching. You have a certain student and they seem to fit the, the type, the personality. Um, and uh, so you make that assumption in your mind that oh, that's that kid. And, um, usually they are pretty quick to confirm our assumptions. And Hendricks talks about this in his own life. Um, he was, <laughs> he came from a, a rough background, rough neighborhood. So he had trouble in school. And he says, one teacher uh, told him in the fifth grade, oh, Howard Hendricks, I've heard a lot about you. I understand you're the worst kid in the school. So he says, okay, well, that's a challenge. I'll take you up on that. And uh, he did not disappoint her expectations. So I want to go on and read a little bit here and then talk about what I've done to try to get to know my students um, um, before school even starts so I can avoid um, labeling them as much as possible. Hendricks goes on to say, sometimes I ask teachers, which kids in your class do you like the most? And they'll say, oh, there's a pretty little girl with long curls and she never peeps and never gives me any problems. Well, she may still not be peeping 20 years from now, but the kid who's climbing the walls today may become your pastor or a missionary tomorrow. Kids with enough creative energy to get into trouble can have enough drive to live highly significant lives for Jesus Christ later on. Sometimes they come into your, our, our Sunday school class so energetic and excited and curious, and what do we do? We whip it all out of them. Hey, cut that out. Don't you know this is Sunday school? So that's all that's been my experience as well is many times uh, the way we do education um, rewards um, quiet students who just follow the rules and do what we tell them. And as teachers, we like that. That's the path of least resistance. But often it's the kids who are the troublemakers who have a lot of energy that have a hard time fitting into the way we do school. Those are the ones that will go off and start businesses. Those are the ones that will go off and uh, join the military. Those are the ones that will go off and um, start movements. So we need to not squelch that energy. We need to not, uh, we need to channel it, obviously, and we need to guide and shape it, but we uh, should not just sit on it and um, make them sit still and uh, be quiet <laughs> the whole time. So, um, as one of the other laws of teaching uh, states, uh, teaching is about what the, what the students know, not what we know. So, we want to hear from the students. We want to encourage them. So, what have I done to get to know my students um, before the school uh, year even starts? Uh, so, I sent out a little uh, questionnaire. And um, in online school schooling, uh, it's even more challenging because you know, we're not um, hanging out with them. Um, in between classes, we're not eating lunch with them. And so this is just an effort I'm uh, making to get to know them a little bit more. So we have some questions that are, you know, their background, some silly questions about their secret ninja skills. Um, but then what types of books do they like to read? Where do they live? Um, do they have a job? What's their dream job? If you only had to eat three things for the rest of your life, what, what would they be? So things like that. So I've gotten some good responses so far. I'll put a link to this in the uh, description. Another thing I did uh, 
was sent a, an email to all my parents saying, look, I'm a dad, I, I have five kids. Um, kids are challenging, kids are different. Um, they don't come in prepackaged molds. Um, let me know what challenges or learning differences your student has. And so far I've got a lot of great response from that. Uh, and it turns out my students, some of them have been through a lot of things, um, hard hardship. And that's something I've also learned in 21 years of teaching is there's always something going on, um, whether we know it or not, in our students' lives. And so we need to just keep reminding ourselves of that. Um, there's always something going on, or, or, or there will be something going on. Um, life happens. And so we need to be um, open to hearing about that and be flexible, work with our families. Again, we're partnering with them in this process. So just a bit of encouragement to all the teachers out there as we start off another year. Uh, great book, highly recommended. Um, get to know your students, uh, don't make assumptions, and have a great year.